Welcome to this YouTube channel. In this video we are going to talk about top 10 facts about Nader Shah. So before starting this video like this video, and subscribe to our YouTube channel for future updates. Nader Shah Afshar, August 1688 to June 19, 1747, was a wealthy Iranian king, who served as Shah of Iran, Persia, from 1736 to 1747, when he was assassinated during a revolt. Some historians have dubbed him the Napoleon of Persia, the Sword of Persia or the Second Alexander because of his military prowess, as shown by his various campaigns in the Middle East, Caucasus, Central and South Asia, such as the battles of Herat, Mamandust, Mershe Court, Kirkuk, Yegevard, Khyber Pass, Karnal and Kars. Nader was a member of the Turkoman Afsha tribe, a semi-nomadic tribe based in Khorasan, northeastern Iran, that had provided military support to the Safavid dynasty, since Shah Ismail the first here are the top 10 facts about Nader Shah, number 10. Nader came to power during a time of instability in Iran, following the overthrow of the defeated Shah Sultan Hussein by the Hataki Pashtuns and the conquest of Iranian lands by the Safavid's archenemy, the Ottomans, as well as the Russians. Nader brought the Iranian realm back together and drove out the invaders. In 1736, he became so powerful that he deposed the last members of the Safavid dynasty, which had governed Iran for more than 200 years, and declared himself Shah. Number 9. Nader admired Genghis Khan and Timur, the Central Asian conquerors before him. He modeled his military prowess after them, as well as their brutality, particularly later in his reign. His successes during his campaigns briefly elevated him, to the role of West Asia's most powerful sovereign, reigning over what was arguably the world's most powerful empire, but after his assassination in 1747, his rule and the Afsharid dynasty he established soon disintegrated. His second and third campaigns in the northwestern, areas of his domain against the then revolting Lesgians, as well as other ethnic groups of Dagestan, marked a turning point in his military career. The last great Asiatic military conqueror, according to legend, was Nader Shah. Number 8. After a large hunting party on the Mohan Plains, now divided between Azerbaijan and Iran, Nader proposed to his closest associates that he be crowned the new king, Shah, in place of the young Abbas III. Tarmasp Khan Jalayar and Hassan Ali Beg Bestami were among Nader's wide circle of close friends. The party did not demur, as Nader said, and Hassan Ali stayed quiet. When Nader inquired about his silence, Hassan Ali responded, that the safest thing for Nader to do would be to gather all of the state's top leaders, and obtain their approval in, a signed and sealed declaration of consent. The initiative was accepted by Nader, and the Chancellery's authors, which included court historian Mirza Mehdi Khan Asterabadi, were tasked with issuing summons orders to the nation's military, clergy, and aristocracy. People were summoned in November 1735, and they began appearing in January 1736. Nader held a Q-Oraltai, a grand conference in the style of Genghis Khan and Timur, on the Mohan Plains in January 1736. Because of its scale and abundance of fodder, the Mohan Plain was selected. Many, if not all, enthusiastically agreed to Nader becoming the next ruler, the rest fearing Nader's wrath if they expressed sympathy for the deposed Safavids. Nader was crowned Shah of Iran on March 8, 1736, a date selected by his astrologers is particularly auspicious, in front of an extraordinarily large gathering of the nation's military, religious, and aristocracy, as well as the Ottoman ambassador Ali Pasha. He made a bargain with notables and the clergy, promising not to curse Omar and Uthman, not to beat themselves to draw blood at the Ashura festival, to recognize Sunni rituals as legal, and to follow Nader's children and relatives after he died, thereby establishing a dynasty in his name. Persia was being realigned with Sunni Islam as a result of his efforts. The notables agreed to participate. Number 7. The Safavids founded Shia Islam as Iran's official religion. Nader was most likely raised as a Shia, but as he rose to power, and started to advance through the Ottoman Empire, he converted to the Sunni religion. Safavid Shiism, he thought, had exacerbated the rivalry with the Sunni Ottoman Empire. His army was made up of Shia and Sunni Muslims, with a significant Christian minority, as well as Uzbeks, Afghans, Christian Georgians and Armenians, and others. He wanted Iran to follow a kind of Shiism he called Jafari, after the sixth Shia Imam Jafar al-Sadiq, that would be more suitable to Sunnis. He outlawed certain Shia rituals that offended Sunnis, such as the swearing of the first three caliphs. 
Nader was known to be agnostic about faith, and the French Jesuit who acted as his personal physician said it was impossible to tell which religion he practiced, and that all of those who knew him well said he didn't have any. Number 6. Nader wished that Jafarism would be recognized as a fifth school, Majab, of Sunni Islam, and that its followers would be allowed to perform the Hajj in Mecca, which was within Ottoman territory. The Ottomans declined to recognize Jafarism as a fifth Majab in subsequent peace talks, but they did encourage Iranian pilgrims to perform the Hajj. Nader was involved in obtaining Iranians' permission to perform the Hajj, because of the revenue generated by the pilgrimage trade. Nader's religious reforms also had the aim of further weakening the Safavids, as Shia Islam had already been a significant source of support for the monarchy. He strangled Iran's chief mullah after he was overheard expressing sympathy for the Safavids. The adoption of what became known as the Kolar e Naderi was one of his reforms. Number 5. In 1738, Nader Shah captured Kandahar, the Hataki dynasty's last stronghold. His thoughts had now shifted to India's Mughal Empire. This once dominant Muslim state to the east was disintegrating as local enemies, such as the Sikhs and Hindu Marathas of the Maratha Empire encroached on its territories. Muhammad Shah, the emperor, was unable to save the disintegration. The Afghan rebels were to be handed over to Nader, but the Mughal emperor resisted. In a brilliant campaign against the governor of Peshawar, Nader used the pretext of his Afghan enemies seeking refuge in India to cross the border, and invade the militarily weak but yet extremely wealthy Far Eastern Empire, and he took a small contingent of his forces on a daunting, flank march across nearly impassable mountain passes, and took the enemy forces positioned at the mouth of the Khyber River. Ghazni, Kabul, Peshawar, Sindh, and Lahore were all captured as a result of this. Number 4. Despite being outmanned 6 to 1, Nader Shah defeated the Mughal army in the massive Battle of Karnal, on February 13, 1739, in less than three hours. Nader captured Muhammad Shah and reached Delhi after this glorious success. When news of Nader's assassination spread, some Indians assaulted and killed Iranian troops. By midday, 900 Iranian soldiers had been killed. Nader, enraged, ordered the city to be sacked by his troops. 20,000 to 30,000 Indians were killed by Iranian forces in a single day, March 22, and up to 10,000 women and children were enslaved, prompting Muhammad Shah to beg Nader for mercy. Number 3. Nader Shah promised to withdraw in retaliation, but Muhammad Shah paid the price by turning over the keys to his royal treasury, and even losing the fabled peacock throne to the Iranian emperor. The peacock throne became an emblem of Iranian imperial power after that. Nader is thought to have taken jewels worth up to 700 million rupees with him. The Koh-i Noor, Persian for Mountain of Light, and Daya-i Noor, Persian for Sea of Light, diamonds were among the treasures stolen by Nader. The Iranian troops left Delhi in early May 1739, but before they did, he returned to Muhammad Shah all of the territories east of the Indus that he had conquered. 700 elephants, 4,000 camels, and 12,000 horses were used to transport the loot. The amount of loot confiscated in India was so large, that after his return, Nader suspended taxes in Iran for three years. Number 2. Nader's emphasis on common Turkmen ancestry, was intended to create a large political structure, that would enable him to be more closely linked to both the Ottomans, and the Mughals than his Safavid predecessors. Nader remembered in numerous official records how he, Ottomans, Uzbeks, and Mughals all shared a Turkmen ancestry. In general terms, this idea mirrored the origin stories of Anatolian Turkmen dynasties in the 15th century. The Ottomans and Mughals were the primary targets of Nader's ideas about Jafarism and traditional Turkmen descent. He may have seen a need to reconcile diverse elements of the Umar against Europe's growing influence at the time, but his vision of Muslim unity differed from later conceptions. He suggested a peace deal with the Ottomans, declaring that the Persians had returned to the Sunni branch of Islam. Number 1. As a result of his disease and his ability to extort more, and more tax revenue to fund his war efforts, Nader grew increasingly ruthless. New uprisings erupted, and Nader smashed them mercilessly, erecting towers out of the heads of his hostages in the style of his hero Timur. Nader set out for Khorasan in 1747, intending to prosecute Kurdish insurgents. Any of his officers and courtiers, including two of his family, feared he was going to kill them and plotted against him. Muhammad Kuli Khan, the captain of the guards, and Salah Khan, the overseer of Nader's household, were among those who plotted against him. Nader Shah was assassinated in Kukan, Khorasan, on June 20, 1747. 
he was stabbed to death in his sleep by a group of about 15 conspirators. Before he fled, Nader managed to kill two of the assassins. He was succeeded by his nephew Ali Kli, who changed his name to Adil Shah, after his death, Righteous King. Adil Shah was most likely a part of the assassination plan. What do you think about this video? Which of the following top 10 facts about Nader Shah you find most interesting, do let us know down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video and want to hear from us again, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go.